All right, guys, it's going to be a quick down and dirty, just initial overview of the new Miyagi uh, shrimp tanks, uh, sorry, crawfish tanks. And a system is designed mostly to grow feed for my water, uh, for my ducks, right? Uh, and for my other um, aquatic systems. So there will be no predatory fish of any kind in this pond. It'll be pretty much limited to goldfish. There's a few in here. I think they all... Uh, swam over in the deep hole it's about two foot deep at the deepest point it's average is about 20 it's fairly shallow uh that needed to be the case to make the entire thing work but I, i've done a walkthrough of this prior to construction now i'll do a real quick one uh post construction right now it's 100 percent running on solar power you can see the there's 200 watt solar panels up there they're running a direct drive pump that kind of orange color is part of the pump that's laying over there uh in the deepest of the holes it pumps water up to those three tanks distributes evenly between the three overflows right there i'll show you that in a bit we have my my air stacks running as far as i know i'm the only person that's ever built those quite the way that i do i've never even seen anything really quite like them system is designed to overflow intentionally right here uh unlike a typical miyagi where we do everything we can to make it as level as possible this one actually is just a little bit lower on the overflow side and actually kind of just kind of bends a little bit to where this is actually the lowest point because i want overflow i'll show you some different ways that happens in a second but there will basically be using the remnants of the liner a rock covered dry creek bed going to several swales and then distributing in those swales due to the overflow of this pond to go grow trees downgraded this system i'm not going to say anything more about that today that'll make more sense when it happens just so you kind of understand where things are going again there's our pump Direct drive solar, no battery backup, power, two controller, two pump, pump, sun goes down, pump goes off, sun comes up, pump comes on. Um, up here, and we're not running full capacity even yet. You can see the aeration we're getting from this. That Anybody looking at this that didn't know what they were seeing would be sure there's air stones down in there and there's an air pump running. That's just water. And it's running in... Again, I call these air stacks because I don't have a better name for them. They're kind of hard to get off one-handed. You can see these little tweaks I made to them. I went deep in the water column with a few holes, mid-water column with a few more holes, one and a quarter inch pipe sleeved on so it can't get knocked off to a piece of one-inch delivery pipe, and that's it. It just sits there, and, you know. What happens is it drives the water into the column the air actually compresses inside the pipe. Some of it, of course, does rise through the water column and come out the top of the pipe, but some of it's forced through the holes or slits, depending on how I design them. And we end up with this beautiful aeration. These are my overflow apparatuses. Um, this is your primary right here. And basically there's just a, I just took a chop saw, so I can turn that and cut a whole bunch of slits in them. Uh, that way they're less likely to get clogged. And then I'll fix that later when I don't get my jacket wet. This little piece of like stubby pipe here, bring up, this is a breather so it doesn't form a siphon. And it's also a secondary overflow. So if we get a surge for some reason, we have a full open pipe to handle the overflow until I correct it or until it passes. For instance, when we get rain off that roof, we're gonna get a surge. Uh, this will help with it. These tanks will overflow some, that's okay. Uh, I'm not too worried about that. Now I said siphon. So what can happen if you look at the way I designed this overflow, I intentionally designed this to pull a siphon in a surge event. So if you see how that comes up, down around that 45 and into that air stack, you are absolutely, if all three of these tanks fill up to the surge capacity, you're gonna pull a siphon. That's a good thing, because during surge, we pull, break, pull, break, and we just try to, try to keep overflow away as long as we possibly can. These are one inch intakes, but the actual overflow is built with one and a quarter. My reasoning, anything that will fit through a one inch pipe will not get stuck in a one and a quarter inch pipe. I'd rather the, the clogs be here than down there. So we have these three tanks. These are primarily gonna raise crawfish and, and other fauna and other aquatic vegetation to feed other critters. This is mainly a feed system. They overflow here. And this is my standard style air stack. In fact, I didn't even build one for it. I just re took one that I had used for something else that I had changed out and stuck it in to get it done quickly. I've got a lot of little tweaks and, and, and bothers to get done on this system. Now the way this is gonna work is you can see this little plant here. That's called water hyacinth. That's the first one in. There's not a lot of biology in here yet. I'm just slowly building up the biology. 
It's going to build very quickly, though, when you see the other part of it, if you don't know already. There's my few goldfish back there in the corner coming out of the light, right? Just netted them out of some of my other systems. Um, what's going to happen is we're going to have a feeding station slash initial composting pit right there on the other side of that gate. People have been asking, can't the ducks get in there? Absolutely, but no. Right, so they have no problem getting over there, and they will. And the day we filled it up, we had the gates open, and students here, they did. It was no big deal. We kicked them out, and we, they may be allowed in, like I don't know, once every two or three months, for a full day of frolicking and fun, because their nastiness is going to go in here. That's part of the plan. So we're going to have that compost pit, aquatic vegetation growing here that is high in protein and good for duck feed and chicken feed. You get in here with a pitchfork. Imagine my hands a pitchfork. You pick up big, giant lobs of it. Don't even have to take a step turn. Drop it over the fence. Repeat until you feed them as much as you want that day. That's all that it'll be. It sits there. Whatever they eat, they eat. Whatever they don't eat becomes part of the composting system. How do we feed it and make it grow really, really fast? We use duck waste water. Now, I don't want super nasty duck waste water. So what I've built here, we call it Duck Mountain. And they've already been trained and they're already using it. But I'm going to show you why it doesn't become a complete sludge pit and why it wouldn't even matter if it did. You see little duck prints all over Duck Mountain. And they've nastied the water. Oh, they have absolutely nastied the water up. And uh, so now it's time to drain the water. I'm going to drain this water into the pond because I'm slowly building up biology and nutrient in there to get things kick-started. But most days... Actually, the way it's going to work right now is a three-day rotation. One day, the water drains right there. And one day, the water drains right there. Those are going to be two weeping willows to provide shade for the birds. Fodder system as well. All that jazz. And uh, day three, we'll go ahead and drain into the pond. We'll do that right now. That's done through basically just really simple straight valves in this one and a quarter delivery pipe. So that one right there would deliver to the tree that's going to be planted there. Well, I have love willows. If I want to drain this nasty water into my pond, which I do, believe it or not, open that up. And if we take a stroll down here, we will swiftly find, well, that as you would expect, when you're upgrade from a downgrade and you open up a valve, water comes out. So it's dumping that into there right now. Now I had a lot of concerns about this. It's going to be too nasty, whatever. Okay, first of all, because of all the ponds I have, I will at some time this year be investing in a very small dredge. Uh, they sell for about 400 bucks, and they're basically a really modified, amped up, and uh, you know, slightly altered version of a wet dry vac. And you can vacuum sludge out of a pond this size <clears throat> in 15 minutes. And I'll do that maybe once a year. And guess where that's gonna go? Into the compost. Yes, it's anaerobic, but once it's laid out and it goes through the system, it's going to be money for fertility. So problem, solution. The other thing is we want to grow lots of that, that plant right there. This is going to go nuts growing that plant with that nutrient in it. And then the last thing. If you notice, there's no ducks here. They all left. Why? It's daytime. It's time to go out and be a duck in duck vana, right? And that's where all their water and their food is. So in the morning, I drain this. I drain this for them, and it will drain till there's about a couple millimeters of water. You can see it's draining very quickly in the bottom. In our Texas sun, once that happens, if you come out here about an hour later, it's bone dry, and all the stuff that doesn't wash down the hole is like powdered dust. So then when we go to fill it up, we just kind of rinse it through. And again, if I have any point where I feel like, okay, we have too much nutrient in the pond, I want to stop for a while, I can overflow the pond with a garden hose, which I'll have to do at times anyway to irrigate the system down there. And I can just water my trees here and here. And odds are we'll end up putting a valve on that outflow down there, so occasionally we can shut it off, and we'll extend it to some other places I'd like some trees. The irrigation in a conventional sense is not practical. And just from up here, I can water pretty much anything on this side of my property, it's just how long do I want to put a pipe in the ground is all it comes down to. And it's passive and it requires no energy. And again, up on the roof, solar. So this is kind of an evolution in ideas over time. And it is going to be a system that once it's complete, I think will kind of blow you away with the level of function stacking built into it. I've only scratched the surface today, but I know everybody wanted to see it. 
the students worked really hard on this and another build. I'll be talking, I'll put out some, a video on the other build later this week, probably this weekend. Um, these, I know people will ask that don't know already. These were uh, scavenged, salvaged, I guess, by a friend of mine. I bought them from him. Uh, these are fiberglass tubs that used to be used really commonly in the cattle industry to hold molasses for cows to, to eat right out of the tub. So they're very, very well built, very sturdy, very strong. I got them for 30 bucks a piece. I think he paid 10. He bought all the guy had. We've never found them again, but if you find these things, they're totally worth it for all kinds of projects. Charlie's checking in. Sun's up. Speed's up on the pump. That's interesting. As the sun gets more intense, the, the, the movement of the water goes faster. I'll be doing some videos later about why I did some of the things I did there to compensate for a variable pump versus a constant run pump like in my AC systems. There will be some limited AC here. It's some redundancy. It will run at night. There will be some ebb and flow. There'll be some other cool stuff. We'll get to that later. Guys, I hope you enjoyed it. And if you are thinking about building a Miyagi, you should. Just think about what you're doing. Uh, I will be giving more and more information about the things we've learned in doing it, the things we did right, the things we did wrong. But if you're going to go low like this, you know, maybe, what, we got three four-by-fours high, you're in pretty good shape no matter what you do as far as pressure. And if you can dig down a couple feet, which most of you can, all your pressure's down there. We'll take. Uh, we'll talk to you later. Take care, guys. Give me any questions you have on this. I want to do a more robust follow-up video soon.